All right, uh, I want to show an amplifier today. It's a single transistor amplifier, and that may be a configuration that you haven't seen or haven't played with. Um, it is a common base amplifier. And common base means the, the, the base is grounded, and if you look into the input this way, it refers to ground, and if you look at the output, it refers to ground, and it refers to the base. Um, if you look at a common emitter, it's the emitter that's the that's the common between the two of them, and um, so if we, it's a it's kind of strange. It, it needs the way that I have it drawn. It needs a plus voltage and a minus voltage because I'm referring it to ground. So if you just block out this, um, I've shown a circuit like this before, and what I had in here was a diode a reverse bias diode, and you'd say, well, the voltage can't go through a diode backwards. Well, yes, it can if the diode is turned on. So this was a pin diode switch. You see, see it quite often. See if I can remember to link it in down below. But a pin diode switch works this way, where you would have a, um, a diode in, in, in this direction. You would have that here. And because you have a plus voltage, the plus voltage goes through, uh, goes through the diode and turns that diode on. And then you can have actually current go through that diode since it's, it's conducting. Well, that's kind of what we have here. We have uh, a transistor that's in backwards, but if we turn the transistor on, then we can let electrons go in this direction, right? We can let the current go in this direction. Uh, people are going to say, no, not electrons, it's holes. Anyway, okay. you get the idea that, that the current goes this direction. Um, and so, yeah, it's a funny thing. This um, trans transistor is turned on because this is at a negative voltage. So there, there's current flow here because it goes from ground to minus V. So the current flow is from the base into the emitter and then down through this 10K resistor into minus V. Minus V is minus 10 volts. So we have minus 10 volts going across to 10K resistor, which is one milliamp. So we have one milliamp of current going through this thing, all right? And then over here, we have a collector a, uh, resistor. So if you can get by this DC biasing thing, then imagine if you have wigglies here, those wigglies cause uh, current wiggles, okay? And if you have current wiggle on this side, it means that you're wiggling uh, the emitter base junction. And so uh, even though we're wiggling on this side, it's kind of like we're, we're changing the base current, right? So if you have wiggles here, a little bit of base wiggles means a lot of collector wiggles, right? And so a little wiggle here makes a big wiggle here and you get voltage gain. You get zero current gain in a common base emitter, but you get voltage gain. Well, how much voltage gain do you get, right? So in uh, other, uh, like this is a common emitter one, you say, oh, well, it's this resistor divided by this, this resistor. Um, your emitter resistor divided by your collector resistor, that gives you the gain. Well, it's sort of the same thing over here. Remember, if we, if we remove this resistor and we put a ground here, what resistance do we have left over? We have, we have little re. We have the resistance built into the actual um, transistor, all right? And at one milliamp, it's about 26 ohms, okay? At one milliamp, it's about 26 ohms. So if you had a 1k resistor here, then the gain would be 1k divided by 26 ohms, right? It's the same thing over here. All right, we're gonna be using that little emitter um, resistance and dividing it into 5K, all right? So if we have uh, 5K, and we divide it by 26, we're gonna get about 190, 
190, okay? So we claim that the voltage gain is gonna be 190 uh, in my circuit here. So let's go measure it and see if it works, okay? So we're gonna put a signal in here, signal in here, it has to be capacitively coupled, all right? So I'm using a 3904 transistor right here. And, oh, we got the little and then we got the big, okay? And uh, the little is littler than you think because we're at 20 millivolts per division on the little, okay? And so we have about 38, about 38, um, millivolts peak to peak millivolts and the output we have about 5.9 volts okay so 38 millivolts and 5.9 volts okay so 5.9 divided by what did i say 30 what did i say 38 this should be our gain. So let's calculate that. We have 5.9 and 38 divide. We have 155. So our gain is 155. And that's pretty, that's pretty close to 190. <laughs> um, everything's not perfect and there's other things to consider, but yeah, it's about, it's about where it's supposed to be. So yeah, we are getting gain in a common base amplifier. Um, I don't think I've done um, a lecture on common cath, I mean, um, uh, cascode configuration amplifiers. A cascode is, uses a common base amplifier inside of it, but uh, that's for a different video. Um, these are, kind of odd devices. They have zero current gain. They have good voltage gain. They have no Miller effect, so they can be very fast. Um, the downfall of these things is they have a very low input impedance because the input impedance is through this emitter base junction here. So you're getting, like I said, you're getting like 26 ohms of input resistance in this thing, right? So the input resistance is going to be very, very low. Um, and the output impedance of this thing is very, very high. It's going to be 5K. So input, you know, 26 ohms, output 5K. Usually you want it the other way around. Usually you want high input and low output. Um, so, yeah, so there's only special cases where you do uh, common base amplifiers. But at least I, I thought I'd show one today.